Hello and welcome to the When You're Podcast, the podcast for when you're doing anything. Today we're going to be talking about when you're watching Stranger Things, Season 4, Parts 1 and 2. So, when I first started watching this show, uh, when was it, like 2015, 20, 2014, 2015, I was kind of like, I never was like, oh, what is this show? I wasn't like the first one to hop onto it. It was only until like it started showing up on social media. Like people were like, I think that's when people were trying to spoil it without spoiling it. So like they would uh, make a post about like Lego, uh, Eggo waffles and nose bleeding and like the car flipping in the air. And you're kind of like, what is going on? I don't, you know, you don't get it. And then once you watch it, you're like, oh, that's funny. So I think it was around that time. So I begin watching the show first season and I was immediately like this is so cool and it's also in the 80s or 70s or whenever and I was really happy about that and I was like this is a time period it's set in a a great time and it's like completely uh, I really like science fiction I think it's really cool and I thought the whole premise of the show was so fun and cool and it was I, I just really liked it from the beginning and then each season has continued to grow on me and become, I think, better and better with each season. Now, this fourth season is a little bit different because it is, unlike the third season, it was a lot more of like everybody was in different places and they stayed there. Whereas in season three, everybody was doing their own thing, but then they all came back together in the end. And uh, I liked it, but it was also kind of like, you know, Come back together, everybody. And then when they did come back together, eventually, at the end of the season four. If you haven't... Spoilers, by the way. If you haven't seen season four or any of Stranger Things, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Definitely watch it. Um, it's on Netflix, so definitely, definitely uh, give that a watch. But when they come together at the end of season four, you're kind of like, well, the world's kind of in chaos and destroyed and nobody's living in Hawkins anymore. I don't even know what's going to happen to all the families. Do some of them stay? How m- it, it looked like everybody was leaving. So it's kind of like nobody can live there anymore, right? It'll probably be uh, closed off to the rest of the world, which isn't, you know, the worst thing. But it's kind of like weird, you know. I don't know how the town survives with all of the, you know, craters in the city. So it's it's kind of weird. So from the beginning of the season, it's kind of like every season – you know, since season one, after season one, it's like, you think you're done with it, and then it all comes back, but I really like the introduction of Eddie, and how they made him go through it all over again, you know, because season two, it was what, Max, season three was Robin, and then season four is now, is now Eddie, and I like that, I think they, they find new interesting ways for the mind flare to make their way into the world, but this time it was Vecna, and I uh, I like the the whole mind thing and how he's actually number one from Papa's, uh, you know, he's like 11 from the, the Hawkins lab, like 11 was. And I have to say, the most interesting part of this whole season uh, was the Hawkins. You know, Hawkins is definitely the, the place to be for anything exciting and pushing the story forward and doing literally anything because when I went to go rewatch it because I watched it then I rewatched it and I kind of rewatched it again just to make sure that like I really understood everything that everybody was doing because there were certain moment, moments in the whole season where I was bored I was kind of like yeah I get it already you guys are driving you know you guys are here and you have to get here I get it, you have to go here and do this, you know. But I never felt that way with Hawkins. I was always like, yes, this is important. They need to do this. They need to figure it out. They need to learn about this aspect of the Upside Down or about uh, what's happening to the people dying, you know. How do we clear Eddie's name, which was so cool. I thought that it was going to be, it's like a mystery, you know. How do we, one, stop the... Mind Flayer and Vecna and also clear Eddie's name which they didn't end up doing it was kind of like uh, an afterthought it wasn't really it was priority one was Vecna and then it was Eddie but at the beginning of the show it was how do we clear Eddie's name and then it turned into learning this whole thing about Vecna and that's how I knew pretty 
pretty early on that they were going to kill Eddie when they didn't really come up with any plan to like help him or clear his name. They were just like, yeah, we're going to stop Vecna. We've done this before. It's all good, you know? And he's just like, really? That's it? That's all it's going to take? And he's really skeptical. And he's like, how do we clear my good name? Which they never really ended up doing. Uh, which is really, really sad. When he sacrificed himself for the others. So that way they could have a chance at stopping it. And uh, they did and they didn't. I mean, Vecna's like pretty hurt. But he's also alive. And Max is in a coma, but she's like dead or was dead, but she's kind of alive. It's really this weird space of like limbo where it's like, are they alive? Are they dead? What's what's going on? But Hawkins, the Haw the whole Hawkins uh, team, the gang, if you will, they were just one step after another doing whatever it took to stop it while the people in California we're doing nothing. I mean, except for Eleven. Eleven's the most interesting person in the whole uh, California team. She was the only person that was, like, really adding more backstory as to how she ended up leaving the lab and why she is the way that she is today, what ended up happening, and how she got to where she is today, which was nice, you know. I don't think I necessarily needed it, but... It was nice to, that's what made her interesting for me. And to learn more about Henry and one, Vecna, you know, whatever you want to call him. And then we also had the Russian team, which was Joyce and Murray and Hopper, which I found a lot more interesting and fun. And because uh, it's a rescue, right? It's a big, big rescue to save Hopper. And I like when people do that. I like it when it's like, it's kind of like Mission Impossible where you have to like go take something. It's uh, like a heist movie, you know, where you have to go and get something in a really dangerous place. And you're like, how are they going to do it? You know, and that's what I liked about the Russian team was that they were going into Russia. They had no plans of like we get there, we get them out and then we fly home. And then things go wrong. Murray ends up fighting the pilot. The cra the plane crashes. Now they get uh, double crossed by the person who was supposed to let Hopper out. And it just didn't end up working. And everything felt like it wasn't going to happen. And that they were going to be stuck there. But, you know, they always pull through. Hopper manages to stay alive and do, you know, Hopper's Hopper. He's always going to make it through. And I thought that was cool. And... For for Hawkins and Russia to kind of overlap over with each other, because at the end of season three, you were trying to like open another gate, but then in Russia they have their own gate, so it was kind of weird as to why like they were so they came to America to open another gate, which got me thinking, and I was talking to uh, my my brother about it, and it was kind of like if the two are connected and you can like pass through it, like. You can teleport through it. I thought that was a really cool idea. Never ended up happening, but I thought it was cool nonetheless. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know what the connection is between Hawkins and Russia. Or like, if there's other gates around the world. Because all I thought there were was just a gate in Hawkins. But now there's a whole other gate in Russia that... I don't know if it has to be closed up, if it's already closed. Yeah, it's just, it's really weird. That, that they never connected those two points fully for me. They just made it seem like Russia came over here, they opened the gate, and they were trying to kill the Americans or something. You know, I, I didn't really understand it, that, that part. But I do like uh, my theory, which is that, like, you can go from Russia all the way to Hawkins, but that didn't actually end up happening, and it was just an idea, theory, and not, it was all just for fun. So, there's a lot of characters in this show. Like, a lot. And I always get kind of like... Not confused. What's the, what's the right word? I always kind of try to not play favoritism. Because I think everybody... If they weren't needed, they wouldn't be there. You know, even uh, Erica has to be there. Because she's an extra person who can help when it comes to stopping Vecna. You know, she's very useful and she's also really smart even as young as she is 
So, my favorite character in season four, who really, really showed off the most, this this is by far the, this is the character that really shows what this whole series is all about, and that is Dustin. Dustin, Dustin is that character. The one that, no matter what's going on, they're always pushing the the next step of the plot they're always in action they're never stop or doing nothing they're always you know doing something really exciting and fun and in this season that was so clear dustin in every single season and every single time that he's on screen he's befriending somebody in season one he befriended 11 whereas lucas was kind of more distant about it and dustin was also mike's best friend and Nancy really likes Dustin. She thinks he's the best out of all of his Mike's friends. Uh, Dustin befriended Steve in season two, where they went to go uh, find uh, his demo dog, you know. And he also befriended Robin during season three. And then in season four, he befriends Eddie. So, and also Max in season two. You know, he just brings everybody in. He, jo- he includes them into the gang. He's really the, the best character. And he's also the person that everybody goes to for their problems. So when Max was having her headaches, so like she was trying to figure out what happened to uh, the girl that like supposedly Eddie killed, Dustin was the first one she went to. And then he stayed strong on his idea of Eddie. You know, Eddie's not a bad guy. He didn't do this. There's no way he could have done it. And that's the end of it. And he goes searching for Eddie. He gets this crew together and he joins in. And he's just one of the best characters. He he really, in my opinion, is everything that the show is all about. He's really smart. He stays true to himself. He's not like Lucas. Lucas tries to be an athlete, a basketball player. And that didn't end up working out. You know, the the jocks are just terrible people they they tried to kill him they tried to kill Eddie so it was just really cool to see that Dustin stays true to himself he stays really really smart he comes up with theories he saves people he comes to the rescue he comes through and he's everything that I think you need in this show you need somebody who's supportive supportive knows everybody and is just on top of it He's never like, oh my gosh, I I have no idea what to do. What am I going to do? He's always like coming up with the next idea. Because when Nancy wanted to go back in the Upside Down, Steve was like, absolutely not. That's a terrible idea. And Dustin was like, well, we have to do it. And not only do we have to do it, we have an advantage. He, He knows so much about Eleven. And it's because he's friends with everybody. It's because he he knows Eleven and he understands... Uh, who she is and what she can do that he's able to come up with ideas on how to stop Vecna and I think that's so cool that in every aspect he he really knows he's just the idea guy and that that's how I kind of relate to him is that we're both coming up with the ideas and how to complete the task and I, I really like that and Nancy, also a big, big step up for her. I mean, she, she was always really smart, and she was always really dedicated, and she's good with a gun, so I think that's fun. Uh, I, I do really like that she's the one with the weapon for, like, every, every time something goes down, she's the one who pulls out the pistol, the shotgun. She can, you know, use firearms. I think that's that's really cool and fun. But in this season, it was so cool to see her kind of be part of a big group or a bigger group. She's usually, you know, it's either her doing it solo or with Jonathan. And in this this one, she was all a part of the rest of the crew. She she got to to do things with everybody else. Of course, her and Robin also did their own side quest, learning about Vecna and learning about uh, what happened to his father, how he gouged out his eyes and he's in prison. And all of that jazz. And how music was the key to waking uh, them up out of Vecna's spell. You know, out of his curse, if you will. And I thought that was really cool. And Robin was also 
fun. I mean, she can be kind of like all over the place, but she's she's really fun, and I think she's a good member of the team, and she's uh, she's pretty smart. She she she's always wary weary weary wary of like the situation. She's kind of like okay, but like we're not we can't do this. You know, it's we're not strong enough. There's no way. It's not fair. They, they he can he's as strong as eleven, and they have an army of bats, and it's going to be really difficult. And a big surprise for me this season was Eddie. I, I really liked Eddie early on, first episode, when everything happened or he was giving this big speech about graduating and leaving high school and all that stuff. I thought he was really cool, really fun character and different. You know, he was the outcast, the freak. And I like those characters. I like characters who are different than everybody else and a little bit, you know, fun and weird. Now, for Russia, Joyce is just being Joyce, right? She's going straight after Hopper and nothing's getting in the way. And then Murray just kind of tags along. And for Joyce, it was a lot of screaming and yelling and uh, just kind of like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get Hopper. We're going to go to the plane. We're going to get in Russia. We're going to give him the money and blah, 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 blah. And things didn't end up working out that well. But in pure Joyce fashion... It all comes it all comes together in the end. She always pulls through. She always gets the job done. And Hopper, that is a strong man, capable of taking torture, punishment, and still just being an all around uh a big big hero. He's he's a really cool character and he's really exciting to watch because you're just like okay what's the next step of the plan how are they going to scheme their way out of this prison because it's harsh it's terrible and you get fascinated with his new life and how he's just like struggled to survive and to like make it out and when he does make it out you're like yes that's hopper and at the end of it when he kills the demogorgon slices its neck off perfectly to running up that hill you just like yeah you're just so excited and you're like really happy about it. And that's why Hopper's probably one of my favorite characters. He's definitely up there. Um, but it, it just excites me to see how, how much further they can take his character. Because in season one, he was just the, the police chief. And then the second season, he was kind of like the father figure. And then season three, he was the degraded father figure he was really upset and angry and weird just about 11 growing up and being you know a teenager and then in the fourth season we kind of see him humbled a lot you know he gets thinner obviously um and I just think it's so fun to see how he goes from being one thing to a completely different person and he's able to appreciate the things that were there before like 11 before he was kind of like really I think in the third season he was really harsh and pretty mean but then now that he's back he can be like fun hopper again you know do the be the father figure and be a better one for 11 and uh, I like that I think that's going to be really cool for the next season and then Murray, Murray also pulls through, knowing Russian. Um, he's also, uh, he, he got some karate moves. I was kind of like, oh, this is going to be just some silly bit where he's like fighting. But he actually, you know, he's got some hands. He, that was funny. I like that. And you definitely need somebody who can, who can fight when you're doing stuff like that. Because Hopper, he's like injured. His foot's all messed up. He's got lashes on his back. He just... Eesh. He, he can't fight forever but I like Murray Murray was cool um, and him being able to speak Russian is a big plus for the whole group especially for that moment and now for the least exciting group uh, the California people the people in California this was just I don't even they're kind of just I don't know how to say this without being... They they were so boring. It was so lame to see like characters like 
Eleven, Mike, uh, no Schnapps character, Will, Jonathan, and then the new new guy, uh, Argyle. I was just like, this is a complete waste of time. I was so bored throughout every scene that they were in. I was just kind of like, all right, we get it. You know, I understand, Mike. You like Eleven. You love Eleven. And you want her to be by your side forever. But you're boring. You don't do anything. You know, she she's a superhero, as you say. And you're just this nerdy nobody. I just... I just felt like it was a big waste of time to, like, not include them in whatever what everybody else is doing. But I also get it. They were trying to save and find Eleven, and they had, like, distance, but it just didn't involve them that much. It kind of put them off to the side, and I thought they were, they were better than that. I thought they were a lot better than that. But I guess not. Um, and when... The show was like hinting at a lot of people dying. I thought that Jonathan was going to die. I thought that probably Argyle would die. I thought um, I thought Max could die. Uh, it was really weird, the whole Max situation. I thought Eddie was going to die. Um, Steve was up in the air, but I never was like worried. You know, I thought that he could die, but... You know, they're not going to kill off Steve. It's Steve. Steve Harrington. You know, you got to you gotta keep him in there just a little bit longer. But, yeah, the California team, they were just all over the place. It was just a, a sad road trip. It wasn't even, like, fun. They didn't really have fun. They were just like, okay, we got to figure out where Eleven is. Oh, but the most exciting thing from the California team was when the uh, they were under protection and they wanted to order pizza and then the the bad guys, the military uh, that were after 11, they just started shooting up the whole place and they did that one take uh, scene where it's just them shooting at them and then the police officer is shooting back and it's a big firefight and then Argyle gets there. That was the most exciting thing that they ever did. Like that was pure joy like I was I was thrilled I was like oh my gosh this could actually happen Jonathan could die and then he didn't you know which was a big bummer but it had you know he needed to be there for some more brother bonding which we already kind of got in season two so I didn't think it was that needed but they did it anyways and I think the final thing is just about Vecna and the whole situation with the Upside Down and the Mind Flayer, their overall plan to take over the world. And I like that they made Vecna a singular character that we can focus all of the evil onto. You know, it's not just like this big, ominous, you know, creature or demogorgon, if you will. It's actually Vecna who embodies evil and we can project our like a singular character of like okay this is the person that we have to be you know as opposed to like just a regular monster or demodogs or one demogorgon you know a creature this is actually a thinking breathing and intelligent uh you know opponent and i i like that they when it was revealed that it was actually Henry one as Vecna, I was like, that's really cool. And I, I like that uh, part of the whole story. And I also liked how they did a lot of mind fights. I thought Eleven was really... Her training really prepared her for that moment, but it didn't give her the strength to really defeat him in that moment. And that's why... When Max died, I was like, ooh, that is a choice. That is that is a crazy choice. And I liked it. But then they brought her back to life, sort of. I don't know, dude. It's still, I still think they should have killed her, like straight up killed her. But again, if she's still alive, then the Upside Down can't fully win, you know? So that's the last part. And that's what this next season is hopefully going to finish about the upside down and is going to you know 
lead to other stuff. And I'm excited for the next season. I think that this season was really fun, and the build-up towards part two was exciting as well. But then the plane didn't exactly land for me. I thought there was a lot more they could have done. Um, I would have liked all the characters to come back together. I thought that it was a wrong guy, wrong choice to keep Max in a coma. But maybe you know, in the next season, it'll it'll all work out, or like it'll all come together and make sense. But it just it 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 crash landed a little bit at the end. But the beginning in part one, Eddie and Dustin, as always, uh, made the show really fun and enjoyable. And I I like this season a lot. And I'm excited for the next season, which will come out in, you know, five years or whenever, you know, because they they spend a lot of time on this and money. So let's hope for the best. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, This is When You're Watching Stranger Things Season 4, Part 1 and 2. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.